So thank you, uh, Carmen, for the invitation to present. Um, I work for Janet Brown Opinion Research. We are a Calgary-based polling company. Um, I studied political science, so this is sort of a, a straddling of the polling world and the political behavior research world. <laughs> and this is presenting results from a study that we did for CBC Calgary as part of the Road Ahead uh, series back in uh, winter, spring 2018. So the data is a bit dated, but I can tell you that um, at least until uh, up until our latest numbers, which were just after the UCP budget was dropped, since the UCP was formed, there's been very little change in voting intentions. And in fact, the data that here could have predicted the election result a year out. That's how static the, pub the political opinion um, uh, state is in, in Alberta. And so I just also want to thank CBC, which sponsored this project, and then uh, Dwayne Bratt from Mount Royal University and Melanie Thomas from the University of Calgary, who are academic uh, advisors on this project. And so um, just a quick plug for why you should trust me. Um, the bottom is the election result, and then the top is the poll that uh, we conducted uh, during the election campaign. So we are one of two firms to get every single party within the margin of error. And we were the only firm to get every single party within the margin of error at the regional level. So uh, suffice it to say, we're good at what we do. Um, so on to the data itself. So like I said, it was collected winter, spring 2018. And the, the big thing that we wanted to do was to get away from typical horse race polling. Um, what's going on behind vote intention? And uh, another question which came out of that is, are Albertans really as conservative as everybody thinks they are? And the answer there is not really, it depends, but definitely not a resounding yes. And so the survey results that I'm gonna present uh, come from the survey we conducted from CBC, uh, pretty large as far as a uh, Alberta provincial poll goes, uh, sample size of 1200, so that gives you a margin of error, 2.8 percentage points. Um, we do live telephone interviewing, we still do uh, probability-based sampling. We're one of the few firms to stick to both live telephone interviews and probability-based sampling. It's not that we don't do uh, online panel polls, but uh, we typically don't do it for political stuff. Um, and then we take a large number of uh, steps just to make sure that we're not, um, we're not sort of contaminating our sample with, with a response bias by only getting easy to reach uh, respondents. And that's part of why our polls have been as accurate as, as they have been. And so with that, let's go straight into the results. So this idea is, is Alberta conservative? I mean, we have, we have a string of conservative uh, governments that was broken uh, sort of in the last electoral cycle, but you know, you'd have to go back to the early days of Alberta um, when the Liberals uh, governed the province back in its formation to really find sort of the first, uh, you know, the last left-wing or, or progressive government. Uh, some debate about how to classify the, the United Farmers, but um, definitely the Liberals are sort of the last government uh, before the NDP to have been from the center of the left. And so trying to figure out if people are conservative um, is more like a lot of people treat this as a measurement problem, but it's actually a conceptual problem. Like what does it mean to be conservative? And, and how would we define that? Is that based on how they view themselves, right? So we call that symbolic ideology in the political science literature, like you know, on a scale from zero to 10, how left-wing or how right-wing are you? Are we gonna ask people their policy preferences? This is the approach taken by the vote compass studies, right? If you've done that, they ask you, you know, do you agree with this particular policy? You answer enough of them, we can put it through a statistical meat grinder and put you on some map of political space. Well, we took a different tactic. We looked at values. So rather than asking people's stances about very specific policy questions, i.e., should there be a provincial sales tax or not, you know, it's like, should we generally have more taxation or less taxation? Or should we generally have more government intervention to create jobs or less government intervention to create jobs, right? So very general enduring statements. And then we compare that against, you know, the traditional left-right spectrum that's very often used in American politics. And, and I'll start off with that because the results are actually kind of cool, right? The plurality response, 30% of Albertans put themselves dead center, right? So this is just a question on a scale of zero to 10, where t zero is very left-wing, 10 is very right-wing. Where would you put yourself, right? 30% of Albertans put themselves in the center. More people put themselves right of center than left of center. 
And if you look at the three middle categories, four, five, and six, they total up to just over 50%. So the majority of Albertans are either center, center left, center right, or that's how they view themselves. Um, so how well does that line up with the actual substantive content of their, of their, of their political views? And oh, if you were wondering, so the at provincial average is five point right, so so very very slightly center right. UCP voters on average are six point six. Obviously, there's a distribution, there's a bell curve, right? Um, liberal voters are four point six. NDP voters averaged four out of ten, right? So interesting. Um, UCPers aren't saying they're eights and nines on average, and NDP voters aren't putting themselves as ones and twos uh, on the spectrum. But certainly the UCP voters think of themselves as being more right wing than the NDP voters think of themselves as being left wing. It's kind of interesting. So we'll ask them about values now, right? And so we asked 15 questions that you could sort of subdivide into six different buckets, right? Um, we have three questions on economic values, five questions on social values, Western alienation. Actually, regional alienation is a big thing in Canada, which I think doesn't get a lot of you know, credit. If you talk to Maritimers, uh, people who identify strongly with their maritime background, they hate Ottawa. Um, and I think we forget that, right? But, but the dynamics of how regional alienation plays out uh, it, you know, is different in different parts of country. Populism, right, big thing these days in the world. Um, political disaffection, similar to populism, not really. And then three questions about Alberta's relationship with the oil industry. Um, and then we plug this into a statistical meat grinder. So the, the procedure we use, my clicker just died. Um, we used uh, k-means clustering. Um, we assign all the scores on a numerical, numerical range from uh, just a unit range common to all of them. And then we run them through k-means clustering. So uh, for those of you unfamiliar, k-means is just a uh, clustering procedure that divides up the universe. Yeah? So the way you have, have people answer those questions, is that just with yes, no, or on the it, It's a Likert, they're Likert items. So strongly agree, somewhat agree, somewhat disagree, strongly disagree. So right. we'll assign points from minus one to one, corresponding with each answer. And it's standardized so that every sort of low scoring values are more left wing and high scoring values are right wing. Um, we do not create scales because if we had created scales of, of the items, because you saw there's three items for economic conservatism, five for social, social values, um, that's sort of imposing equal weighting on it. So we sort of just let, uh, let the computer decide uh, what the weighting would be. And then k-means divides up the universe into roughly equal size proportions. Um, we did double check with latent uh, class analysis. Um, which attaches confidence intervals to the estimates and got broadly comparable results. So we went with k-means clustering because we had to explain this to journalists who haven't studied stats in a long time. So um, it just made it, made it easier. And then I'm going to present to you a map of the results um, that simplify it into two dimensions, economic and social. So obviously understand when you see the map, there's, you know, the map shows eight questions or the scales are eight questions but there's 15 questions that go into the classification algorithm. Um, as to why we chose the number of clusters we did, uh, if you've done any sort of cluster analysis, you keep going up in the number of clusters until you get to a place that doesn't really give you any more explanatory power um, and starts to sacrifice the simplicity um, of, the, of the interpretation. And so just the key findings, we find four clusters of values of Albertans. Um, there's variation along demographic lines, but not as much as along psychological quantities of interest, namely uh, symbolic left-right ideology, vote choice, um, or uh, the, the value clusters that we identified. And the value clusters align well with um, ideological classification and vote choice. So I'm going to quickly breeze through these results um, because it's just a lot of tables. And if I go fast, you can sort of see an animation um, of where things move. So, uh, again, here's our map of political space. Everything on the bottom left quadrant is left-wing economically, left-wing socially. Everything in the top right quadrant is right-wing socially, right-wing economically. And so if you're in that quadrant, you're economically progressive or left-wing, but socially conservative. Here, you're a consistent conservative. There, you're a consistent progressive or a consistent left-winger. And then here, you're economically conservative and socially progressive. And We've presented this to a lot of different places, and now is normally a time we ask people, you know, think to yourself, where do you think most Albertans are going to be? 
And the most common answer that we tend to get is everyone thinks Albertans are all, or that the biggest clump is over here, which it's not. Um, these are 1,200 dots, right? So this is if we plot everybody who answered the survey. So this is a map of where Albertans economic and, and social values are. And they're, they're all over the place. Um, what do you mean by economically progressive? So you want higher levels of taxation, higher levels of government intervention in the economy. Um, you know, the, there's a larger role for the state to play in terms of job creation. Whereas if you're economically right wing, you want lower levels of taxation, lower levels of government intervention in the economy, sort of laissez faire economics, neoliberalism, choose your label for it. So I would love to get into this. This, this is like another presentation in, it, in itself. Um, I gave a presentation to, uh, we, we present to groups and parties all across the political spectrum. And I kind of pissed off this one left-wing group I was presenting to because I said the word progress is meaningless, right? Because like, what does it mean? And, and I mean, without getting into a big um, linguistic debate, I think th there's an inherent advantage, conceptually speaking, of conservatism, because we can all sort of agree what now or what here is or what the status quo is, whereas if you're trying to change that to something else, I think that's, that's a little more difficult. Um, so yeah, so I, I think that's, and that's part of why we use left and right instead of progressive conservative, because um, there's always this big debate, well, what is the opposite of conservative? Um, anyway, so 1,200, 1200 dots, uh, kind of all over the place. Um, the average position is actually just ever so slightly off center um, in the left direction, both economically and socially. But you can see Albertans are everywhere. So we run the clustering procedure and we found, or we decided to go with a four cluster solution and we gave each one kind of a goofy name so that we could offend everybody. So um, these people are consistent conservatives and we call them old fashioned capitalists, right? They want low taxes and they go to church. Um, this thing doesn't like me. Okay, uh, prairie populists. They're actually a little bit center left, economically speaking, um, and they seem sort of socially centrist. They're actually more socially progressive than, um, than uh, if, you, if you look at sort of uh, individual answers to, to questions, um, than how they show up on the chart. Uh, cosmopolitan elites. Very similar economic position to the prairie populace, um, but you see they are quite a bit more uh, socially to the left. Um, part of why we gave one prairie populace or gave one name prairie populace and the other cosmopolitan elites is you can guess the prairie populace are a lot more rural, the cosmopolitan elites are a lot more urban. And then uh, the ivory tower idealists, right? So solidly left wing. On, uh, on both social and, and economic dimensions. And so there's everything all together. And I mean, the clustering procedure does a pretty good job. It's supposed to, it divides up the universe into roughly equal proportions. Um, and you can sort of see that there's a, lo like, there's a lot of um, density sort of on the bottom left, top right, but there's not a lot sort of on that other axis, right? So there's a con there tends to be this consistency, right? You know, for all this talk of the new left and the new right, the new left and the new right are actually fairly well aligned with the old left and the old right. And there you can see sort of the, <laughs> the left right, the left right spectrum, right? Uh, again, not saying that you know, people don't you know, have inconsistent beliefs. People do have inconsistent beliefs and, and they're allowed to, but, um, but the theme is consistency more so than inconsistency. Um, and so just to simplify it, right? If we were to take the group average of each of these clusters, that's what it looks like. Um, and uh, we can see that the old-fashioned old capitalists are actually slightly you know, more to the right than the uh, ivory tower idealists are to the left of the provincial average. So if we compare how, how different other cleavages uh, match up to uh, the clusters that we find, we find that there are differences, but not nearly as stark. I'm sort of going to breeze through this. So there's Calgary. There's Edmonton, so it's not that Calgary's in the top right and Edmonton's in the bottom left. Small cities, and then rural. I mean, definitely more so on the top right, but there's some in the bottom left, right? So Alburns are all over the map, geographically speaking. Um, gender, men, women. So women, a little bit more left-wing than men on average, but again, quite a bit of dispersion. 
uh, 18 to 24 year olds, 25 to 44 year olds, 45 to 64 year olds, and seniors. So it's not that seniors are like super conservative on both dimensions. Education, we're starting to see some bigger gaps here. Graduate degrees, bachelor degrees, some post-secondary, and high school or less. And so again, those psychological uh, factors that I mentioned before, this is religiosity, very or somewhat religious, sort of all over the map, very or not at all religious. You can see sort of denser in that bottom left corner. And then back to that ideology question. So this is anyone who answered less than a five. This is people who said they were a five. And this is people who said they were higher than a five, right? So this is interesting because the left-wingers, I mean, that makes sense. They're all in the bottom left quadrant. Centrists are all over the map. Right-wingers, there's a lot of right-wingers who think of themselves as right-wing, but the values that they have, at least how they score on those values questions, are actually sort of drifting into centrist and, and possibly left-leaning territory. And then vote choice, here's the big one, right? NDP, right? NDP voters solidly left-wing uh, in their values. And then the UCP, we can see that they own the conservative quadrant, but they've pushed into those other parts of the map. Um, and this is, this is what explains the election results even before the election happened, right? Where the UCP has this huge advantage because a lot of people whose, whose values you know, um, aren't necessarily all that conservative, right? Think of themselves as conservative, and then they've certainly voted conservative. Um, Interestingly, the Alberta Party portrays itself as centrist, right? A lot of their voters are actually sort of more to the left. And the Liberals, almost indistinguishable from the New Democrats in terms of the average position, right? You know, and I, I tell this to Liberals, I'm like, no, no, we're to the center of the NDP. It's like, well, not according to what surveys, uh, the surveys show. And there's undecided or other, and there's everything altogether. And so just to sum up some final thoughts, um, it's interesting because, yeah, many voters do have correct self-perceptions of their politics, right? Where they think of themselves as sitting on the ideological spectrum, you know, actually has some accordance with the substantive content of their belief systems, right? But some voters are, I mean, confused or inconsistent, right? And, and that's fine. You know, I get, like, some, some journalists will, will push me on this. Well, this is terrible. And it's like, well, I mean, it's, it's reality, right? Human beings are irrational, we're illogical and inconsistent. That's just, that's how things go. And, and people are allowed to to be inconsistent, right? But, but this is a problem for you know, the opposition in Alberta right now because the UCP has, and conservative parties in general, has this big structural advantage, right? And this isn't actually confined to Alberta. This is something which uh, researchers have seen across the advanced industrial West where you know, people <coughs> tend to think of themselves as conservative um, even though they actually, like the content of their beliefs suggests that they might not actually be as conservative um, as they think of themselves as, right? And yeah, like I said, you know, this is a big challenge for the center and the left um, in, in Alberta because, you know, a lot of people who, you know, might align with them sort of on a, on a values or, or a principles basis uh, don't think of themselves as being aligned that way. So I will leave it at that. Thank you. questions, if you have any questions for John. Where do we go in the future as far as doing this again or trying to do this in the future? Uh, depends if we get another sponsor to do a, a big project. Um, this is very similar to the kinds of projects that um, like JC and, and other academics will do after an election. And so um, there were a few different uh, academic teams that did a post-election survey. So I imagine uh, they will be releasing results sometime over the next year. Um, and, and their analyses will be sort of similar to something like this. So hopefully the mainstream media picks some of that stuff up and it gets reported. How do you feel about people disseminating this out to the public online? Uh, what do you mean? What, as far as people that you need to see in the media, did you find that they were, they had a zeal for, oh, we need to show this to others? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, well, it, we, we did it for, for CBC, and they wrote probably, like, you know, 20, 25 articles on it. Um, if you go to our, our website, um, there's actually a list um, of all the articles that CBC produced on it. There's, an inter there's a few interactive graphs. Um, there's a section on the website called Special Projects, so uh, visit that there. 
Um, and we've had uh, journalists from other outlets, you know, approach us as well, um, you know, asking questions about about this data. So, you know, I think I think there's an interest in this. Um, you know, I think that's part of the success of the Vote Compass platform is that you know people want to, you know, sort of see how how the numbers uh, would sort of show how the political world is organized. And you know, I think the the more information uh, that voters have, I don't I don't think that's that's a bad thing. So yeah. Do you think um, Alberta like just jumped on this bandwagon? Because you know we, we think of ourselves as conservatives, and I feel like a lot of people just you know kind of jumped on this bandwagon. Um, you know that Alberta is conservative. Do you think they're because based on your results, that's kind of what what it's showing. Like people's values are different than what they kind of voted. Right? Yeah, and no, that 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 that's that's a, a good. A good point because you know, and this goes back to that conceptual problem I mentioned about, right? Because to be conservative in a partisan sense is a way of being conservative, right? But if you look at the values, right, there, there is there is a little, I mean, there is alignment, but there is a little bit of a disconnect there. Um, Janet and I presented this to a university class at uh, in Concordia University, Montreal, like one of the most left wing campuses. And you know, when we asked them to predict where Albertans would be, right, they're like, oh the average score is going to be seven and a half out of 10, right? Um, and, and their minds were blown, right? And then we showed individual results. Like there was a question there about, um, you know, like like environmental protection and, and they were surprised, right? And in fact, when you talk to a lot of people who are actually conservative here, um, there is support for environmental protection. I mean, Preston Manning back in the reform days uh, was, was a big advocate of, of st stronger environmental regulations, right? And so the other thing which I hope that this kind of information, you know, gets people to think about, right, is that um, when we attach labels to things, these, these are artificial constructions, right, and they're the result of mathematical procedures like averaging that we impose on them, but within that average, there is variation, right, and, and I think um, the more variation that we have sort of within each of those clumps, it's a good thing because in, in the political science literature, we call that cross-cutting cleavages, and those are the things that you know, get left-wing parties to support, you know, um, tax credits for businesses to create jobs and gets right-wing parties to, you know, support increased levels of immigration, right? You know, and, and so it, it sort of shatters the myth that, that parties are these monolithic blocks and that everybody believes in, in the same thing, right? So. I, sorry, last question. Uh, I remember during the, uh, the series uh, talk about tax aversion being a central value. And I'm wondering, since we didn't see it directly in your presentation, if you can talk about how that correlates with the strategy. Yeah, so um, we asked a bunch of policy specific questions on that. And yeah, it's like Albertans don't want a carbon tax, we don't want a PST, um, but we want actually taxes cut and we, want, we don't want to cut <laughs> social programs, right? And so, I mean, th that is like, you can't reconcile that that set of policy positions, right? And so, you know, how we describe it is Albertans aren't um, economically conservative or fiscally conservative or economically conservative so much as they are tax averse, right? And we've had this luxury of being able to enjoy a high level of uh, public services while having a low level of taxation, right? Um, and in surveys, you know, some of the highest responses we, levels of agreement we get are to questions like, you know, now is not a good time to cut public services. In our post-budget survey, we, we got a lot of agreement to that, that question because people don't want to cut public services, right? But absent of non-renewable resource revenue, there's sort of a circle that we want, that we need to square there. And CBC wanted us to see how could we get Albertans to sort of square that circle? How do we get, how do we preserve service levels but preserve low levels of taxation? And it's like, People can't, right? Um, because yeah, you know, we're 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 inconsistent, um, and we're not really all that fiscally conservative. Is we just don't like taxes because we've had the luxury of not having to pay a high level of taxation because of non-renewable resource revenue. So thanks for thanks for bringing that up. So I am out of time, but I'll be around after if you guys want to ask me more questions. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you.